Hey guys, if you're looking for specific places to invest your money for the long term, then investing in an ETF is one way to go about it. Today, I want to cover seven different types of exchange traded funds, ETFs. And for each one type of ETF, I want to give you a specific example of an ETF that I believe will help you grow wealth for the future. If you're loving the sound of today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. When it comes to investing money, there is a priority you have to take first. If you're somebody who's currently in debt at the moment, I wouldn't say you should be investing in an ETF, especially if you've got expensive debts in your life, like credit cards, uh, you know, and, and or payday loans or anything that's costing you a lot of money in your life right now. Secondly, if you've got a mortgage, for example, with interest rates uh, remaining high, you might be better off actually getting a higher return on overpaying your mortgage before you consider investing in exchange traded funds. Your capital is always at risk when you invest your money in the stock market. And then the final thing I want to say before I start this video is I'm going to be sharing lots and lots of product information. So this video is in by no means a personal recommendation to you. This is not financial advice. Do please make sure you do your own deep due diligence as well as seek your own personal advice before you go ahead investing in, uh, in ETFs more generally. All right, let's jump straight in. So the very first type of ETF I want to share today is the S&P 500, Standard & Poor's 500. It's very popular. Before I even go into sharing what, what that is, it's worth just reminding us ourselves what an ETF is. An ETF is a type of fund that tracks an index. An index is a list of companies and the fund is a pool of money that therefore goes and purchases all the various elements of that list of, of companies, essentially replicating it and tracking it. The S&P 500 is one such list that a, an ETF, a fund, goes ahead and tracks, thereby trying to replicate the performance of that particular index. The S&P 500 uh, has various providers. One of them, Vanguard, very popular. The other is iShares. And there are many others, but I just thought, in the interest of this video, best to just focus on those two just for now. Now, from a Vanguard perspective, a very popular one is the Vanguard S&P 500 USIT ETF with a ticker code VUSA, VUSA. Uh, I'll put this up on the screen for you guys to see. This is a distributing fund, which basically means that any dividends you generate from this particular fund will get distributed and you have to go and reinvest it. If you want the accumulating version of this, the code for it is VUAG. I don't have this on the Vanguard website. If you go and check, you wouldn't find it. But if you look on other brokers' websites, it might be your specific broker, and I'll be coming to one in a moment, you will be able to find this particular fund, ticker VUAG. Now, iShares also have theirs, which I'll put up on the screen for us to look at, the iShares Core S&P 500 USITS ETF. Now, this compares quite similarly to the Vanguard one. The cost of this fund is 0.07% per year, similar to the Vanguard ETF themselves, which means if you invest 10,000 pounds, for example, into this particular, these ETFs, it will cost you around seven pounds per year. So extremely cheap. And the other thing to mention is if you're going to invest into any of these ETFs, do make sure you check what their ongoing charges are, as well as read their key investor information document, the KID, as well as the facts sheets. Now, all this information you can typically find on your brokers or investment platforms website. And one such broker is a sponsor of today's video, Webull. Now, Webull are one of the largest investment brokerages in the US, and they're also now available in the UK. Join Webull today and get up to six free fractional shares with each one worth up to $2,000. If you make the, an initial deposit of any amount whatsoever and complete at least one course on the Webull Learn section, you will get two free fractional shares. Then if you maintain your funds for 30 days, you get another two free fractional shares and finally make your first trade or transaction within 30 days to get another two free fractional shares. Some of the key features of Webull include, you can have low cost transactions, trade more than 10,000 US stocks, including some of the most popular stocks in the world, with low commissions. You have real-time quotes, you can get full extended trading hours, and then finally, you can buy fractional shares and earn your own slice of some of the biggest companies in the world 
by starting your investing journey from as little as five dollars and here's exactly how it works so in your webull account i've opened an account myself i come in here and click on the quick trade button search for my particular stock that i might want to buy in this case use the example of apple and in here you have different order types you've got six different types i'm going to look at the market variety here where i can buy fractional shares once i've selected that i can then come in here and choose whether I'm buying a share or I'm buying by an amount. So I can change this to US dollars, for example, and I can just increase this by up to say $10. And by clicking confirm, I can buy my own slice of this particular Apple stock. Check out the link in our description as well as our pinned comments to join today and get up to six fractional shares worth up to $2,000 each. The second type of ETF is this total stock market ETF. And a good example of that in the UK is the Vanguard US Equity Index Fund, of which you can get it for the accumulation variety or the income variety. Now, looking at this, for example, up on the screen, you can see that this particular fund is invested across 3,639 stocks with an ongoing charge to annual fee of only 0.1%. And it says here that this fund seeks to attract the performance of the Standard & Poor's Total market index, that's a total market which is comprised of large, mid-sized, small cap and micro-sized companies in the United States. So you can see that this differs uh, uh, slightly to the S&P 500 which looks at the largest 500 companies in the US equities market whereas this particular one is focused on the total market, everything from large to micro companies. And you can also go ahead and look at the performance of this particular fund. I like to look at this particular performance from inception. Now looking at performance, past performance here annually, this particular fund is particularly interesting because going all the way back to 2010 here on the screen, as you can see, it has not generated a single loss apart from the year 2022. Every single year has been a positive return for investing in this total stock market index. And of course, remember, this is entirely focused on the US and you might have a different view about the direction of the US for the future but for the people who invested in this in the past they would have done very well. All right so the third type of ETF is an all world ETF. So so far we've looked at the US with the S&P 500 and the total stock market type index. The all world index is an easy and cost effective way to gain global exposure to various uh, companies around the world by simply investing in one or two ETFs that track specific indexes. Okay, now these global ETFs are typically available for either the developed world or the emerging markets or both. Okay, here are examples of indices or indexes that essentially give you that global exposure. The first is the FTSE All World Index which tracks stocks from developed and the emerging markets, but typically focuses only on the large and mid cap companies, so mid-sized companies, okay? Now, if you wanted beyond just large and mid-sized companies, you might prefer for your ETF to track another list entirely, which is the FTSE Global All Cap Index. It's another list, but it's a much more extensive list because it covers large, mid cap, small, as well as micro companies. Now the MSCI, uh, another index that also offers this global ex exposure is the MSCI ACWI index. This particular index tracks large and mid cap st stocks from 23 developed uh, markets and 24 emerging markets worldwide. So you're literally covering a lot of the investable world. And then if you wanted even beyond that, you wanted uh, to include small caps, there's a fourth index, which is the MSCI ACWI IMI index. Sounds like a, like a lot of letters there, but essentially these are the indices that give you that exposure. Now, what we want are the ETFs that then track these particular lists, these indices that give us then that global exposure. So let's look at the FTSE All World Index first. And the first provider, the first fund I want to look at here is the Vanguard FTSE All World U6 ETF accumulation. The ticker code for it is VWRP. Okay. Now this is accumulating. It's a popular fund. And there's another one that has 
exact looks exactly the same uh, with the act with the ticket code VWRL, which is a distributing fund. Both of them cost 0.22%. Okay, and if I put that VWRL up on the screen for us to look at, you can see that if you invested into that fund, if you invested ten thousand dollars into that back in May 2012, you'd be sitting on twenty-seven thousand four hundred nineteen dollars today. Okay, as uh, as a, an approximation, and I worked out that that works out to be a compounded annual growth rate of nine point six percent thereabouts. Okay, now if we look at the FTSE Global All Cap Index, it's a second type of index that gives you beyond just large and mid-sized exposure. A good example of a fund to look at there is a Vanguard Global All Cap Index Fund. I know it's an index fund, not an ETF, but I want to just bring that up as an alternative. Now the thing to note is that this particular fund costs 0.23% per year compared to that previous fund, the VWRL, which costs 0.22%. So for that extra 0.01%, you're then getting that added exposure from uh, much smaller companies, which have been known to enhance performance over time. Okay. Now looking at that though, paying close attention to that, I looked at what $10,000 might look like uh, if you invested in December 2016. And if you did that today, your 10 grand will be sitting at £17,993, which I worked out to be a compounded annual growth rate of 8.75%. So a lower return than we worked out for the previous fund, which was cheaper at 0.22%, but still delivered a higher performance from a compounded annual growth rate perspective of 9.6%, okay? Those numbers are shown to you in a slightly different way on these investment platform websites, but I've just gone and worked out the CAGR, the compounded annual growth rate for us using a different website, okay? Now, the third and fourth uh, indices worth mentioning for that global exposure are the MSCI AWI index. And a fun to check out for that is the iShares MSCI ACWI USIT ETF. I'll put this up on the screen for us to see. Remember with this video, I'm gonna be covering a lot, but do feel free to pause at any point to check out some of these funds in a bit more detail. And then the final one to mention from a global perspective is the Spider MSCI ACWI IMI USIT ETF which gives you that global, global perspective and includes large, mid-cap, small and micro companies, okay? Now, the fourth type of ETF is a high dividend yield ETF. Now, these are focused on rather than when companies make profits, they can either reinvest their profits in, into their companies for that company to keep those companies to keep growing or they can choose to pay out some of those uh, profits to their shareholders and then reinvest some of them, okay? If your investing strategy or if your goals are that you want regular income, regular cash flow, then investing in high dividend yielding ETFs might be an option rather than specific dividend paying stocks, which exposes you to risk for those specific companies. Investing in an ETF, gives you that option in that it helps you reduce that specific risk because your money is diversified across various companies while still paying you a dividend. Up on the screen is an example of one that I looked at, the Vanguard FTSE All World High Dividend ETF with the ticker code VHYL. And you can see up on the screen there, the various types of dividends that are paid and when they're paid, the income distributions, you can see they're being paid there quarterly. And it says that this fund employs a passive management or indexing approach with the goal of tracking the performance of the FTSE All World High Dividend Yield Index. This index is comprised of large, mid-sized company stocks, excluding real estate trusts in developed and emerging markets with the goal of paying you dividends that are generally higher than average. So if that's something you're interested in, if you're interested in dividends that are slightly higher than average and your focus is on income, this might be the type of ETF for you. Remember, these are illustration only. I want to look at the performance of this ETF and up on the screen you can see that if you had put in £10,000 uh, thereabouts in May 2013, you'd be sitting at around 
and 43 pounds or dollars thereabouts, which I worked out to be a compounded annual growth rate, again up on this screen, of 5.5%. Now the fifth type of ETF to share with you guys is the Developed World X UK. These are essentially trackers that invest in the developed world but exclude the UK entirely from their uh, investing, okay? This might be suitable for you if you're someone who already has too much exposure to the UK and you're like, you know what? I already own a home in the UK and I've got other investments in the UK but I wanna invest my money globally but without it going into the UK yet again. If that's you, then this might be for you. Or you might be someone who just says, you know what? I don't have any faith in the UK economy for the, the, the long term. I think I want to invest more globally, so therefore I want to exclude my money from the UK. Again, this might be for you. Now, I found a particular fund. This one, I have to say, though, is an index fund, has the same um, characteristics as an ETF, broadly speaking, as a tracker. And this one is a FTSE Developed World X UK equity index fund, okay? Now I raise this one because uh, looking at it there, you can see from a performance perspective, if you had put in 10,000 pounds into this particular uh, index fund, you'd be sitting on 54,071 pounds, uh, thereabouts from 2009 to 2023. Quite a, a significant leap in what your investing would have turned out to be. And of course, this doesn't inform future performance. All right, number six are REITs ETFs. Uh, REITs are real estate investment trusts suitable for somebody who wants to gain exposure to the property market, but without owning physical property units. You'll essentially be investing in property through the stock market. And these particular REITs essentially invest in other property ETFs or invest in particular property projects with the goal of generating dividends and they're required to essentially pay out 90% of the profits that they generate in these particular REITs are paid out as dividends. A good example of this is one on the screen. It's one of the largest REITs in the UK. It's the iShares UK Property Usage ETF. And if you look there, it says there that this fund seeks to track the performance of index of an index composed of UK listed real estate companies and real estate investment trusts. The fee for this is a bit higher at 0.4% per year. It offers you a diverse, diversified exposure to UK real estate companies and you get direct investment into listed companies and REITs and so on, as well as a single country exposure with a focus on growth. So if you're interested in growth with a single country focus, this one being the UK specifically, then this one might be for you. Up on the screen are some of the biggest holdings in this particular REITs. As you can see, it's holding other large companies in this space, other REITs essentially. For example, Tritax Big Box REIT, for example, British Land REIT, Land Securities Group REIT, REIT and so on, okay? This particular ETF has holdings in these various companies. Now, if you're interested in learning more about REITs, I did a very, very detailed video on this topic, which I'll link to below and above for you to head over and check out in a lot more detail. Now, the seventh type of ETF is the socially responsible ETF. Now, this one is for the socially conscious investors among us. ESG ETFs prioritize environmental, social, and governance factors. A good example is this really popular uh, sustainability-focused ETF, called the iShares Dow Jones Global Sustainability Screened Usage ETF with the code IGSG, okay? As you can see there up on the screen, it says there that this particular ETF gives you a broad exposure to a global companies which have been screened for economic, environmental, and social characteristics. You also have direct investment in companies leading in the sustainability field with exclusion of those which generate revenues from alcohol, tobacco, gambling, armament, firearms, and adult entertainment. You also have worldwide exposure with a focus on sustainability screen companies. However, though, this particular ETF costs you 0.6%. Given the, higher, the much higher cost of investing in a fund like this, you would typically expect the performance to lag behind the likes of the S&P 500, okay? Up on this screen is an example of 
uh, some of the performance year by year of this particular fund. And I do have to mention that this is where the whole idea of sustainability investing really comes, you know, becomes a difficult topic because on one hand, people want really high performance, but on the other hand, they also want to invest sustainably and think about their conscience, think about the environment, think about all the other really important values that are important to them. So for you, you need to be happy and strike effectively a balance between the desire to generate a, a much higher return whilst also thinking about uh, the key things that are important to you from a uh, environmental or uh, ethical perspective when it comes to investing your money. Now, I've got a bonus one to add for you guys and there's so much more I could have covered. The bonus point here is commodity ETFs. Now, commodity ETFs provide exposure to the likes of gold and oil and silver and agriculture and what have you. Uh, a good example of this is that iShares Physical Gold ETC with the ticker code SGLN, which tracks the price of physical gold itself. And again, up on the screen for you to feel free to pause and read a bit more about this particular ETF. Overall, just summarizing everything we've covered today, I believe that it's absolutely important to make sure that you pick an ETF that first of all aligns with your goals, because everyone's goals are different, everyone's at a different stage of their money journey. The ETF also has to align with your values as well as your risk tolerance and appetite. Second thing is to make sure you keep investing consistently because picking an ETF and investing in it for the short term is actually not worth your while. If you're going to go into investing with ETFs, you want to think about investing from a long term perspective. The third is to keep an eye on fees because fees deplete your performance and deplete your wealth over time. So where you might be thinking, do you know what? I want to invest in certain funds driven by my values. You have to also make sure you're balancing that with a need to ensure that you're not paying too much for those investments. And even if you are paying too much, you are happy to accept the cost of such investments. The fourth thing to mention is, although I've mentioned various bits of past performance, past performance is not a reliable indicator of future performance. And nobody, absolutely nobody, including myself, knows what will happen with the stock market for the future. The fifth is to, sh is to say, as I mentioned earlier, that your capital is always at risk. However, without taking risks, there's absolutely no way you generate those outsized returns that might then help you to beat inflation for the future. And then the final thing to mention is if you are interested in investing ETFs, I've made a detailed video previously on the various things you need to check first before you invest in and ETF. So up on the screen is a video that you should watch next for a checklist of things to look at first before investing in an ETF. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you really enjoyed it, I'd appreciate just one thing. Please hit that subscribe button and share this video with one other person who you think will get value from this video today. Thanks again for watching today's video. If you've got any questions related to anything I've shared in today's video, please jump in the comments and I'll be right there waiting to respond to you. Other than that, thanks again, guys. And as always, in all things, be thankful and seek joy. See you on our next video. Bye for now.